welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here. This is my 96 Ranger, the old mini truck here. This is kind of what got me started in the whole thing. And we've been slowly working on getting this thing back on the road. Now, if you're wondering why I'm hiding here underneath the bed of the truck, no, it's not because I got in trouble. It's because this is where we're going to do most of our work today. So I figured, why not just start right here? Now, if you missed the last episode, we got the fuel system all fixed up. We got the truck running again and just kind of started doing some of the cleanup back here. Now, the focus for today is really going to be to attack these mini notches and start working on some of the suspension here. These mini notches will be the bigger of the project, of course. Uh, the suspension may take a little bit because... I got to get, uh, you know, a lot of things apart and a lot of things cleaned up before we start going back together. So we'll see how far we get. But really, like I said, the main focus being these mini notches. No. Yeah. Don't die. Before I get too deep into this thing, I need to take some measurements and figure out what I can get away with as far as height between the bed floor and the top of my notch. Because I want to raise this above the stock height of the frame, I need to be pretty precise on this thing because I don't have a lot of clearance to work with. So I'm going to start out by taking some measurements, jotting some notes down, and uh, getting a rough idea. Then we'll start fiddling around with templates and stuff like that, getting, getting an overall idea what I'm going to do on this thing. Now, some guys like to use, you know, RAM board, uh, you know, whatever else. I like to personally go root around in the old garbage can. And today's flavor of template material is uh, Three Meat DiGiorno, actually. Rising crust. Anyway, I took all my exacting measurements here and transferred it onto a piece of cardboard. And that is going to be my template. Now, this isn't a huge notch. And it's not supposed to be. Like I said, I'm trying to keep this under the bed and, you know, minimal material, I guess, and minimal intrusion into the frame. Uh, this kind of gets me where I need to be. Plenty of width for the axle tube in here. Uh, I don't know if that's picking up, but that's kind of my center line on my frame that I was working from, center line vertically that I was working from, and of course, all my measurements from there. I did leave a little excess on the bottom because, well, I got 8 inch material, 8 inch width material, that was the uh, widest we had on short notice and uh, showing up right before 5 o'clock. Like I said, a little extra on the bottom, I don't, need, I don't know that I'll need this, but when I cut it out of metal, I can definitely trim that up and uh, you know make that fit however it needs to. Then we can go back, basically cut two of these, go back, fill the rest in with strips wherever we need to be. And, uh, you know, probably do a little bit of internal bracing on the back side in between the frame to uh, just bring the strength back around on this thing. So, I'm going to go test fit this on the car, see what we're looking like, and, uh, yeah, maybe start burning some metal here. Alright, I know it's going to be kind of hard to see, but I do have my, my line I was working off here. And, uh, yeah, from out here, it doesn't look like a whole lot. I can hold that up where you can see it. There we go. From out here, it doesn't look like a whole lot, but like I said, I don't have a ton of room up to the top of the bed. It does give me just a little bit and allows me to bring my notch up the ballpark of an inch, inch and a quarter. So I think this is going to work. We can start tracing this out on some metal and uh, get to cutting here. Well, I need to run out to the old parts hauler here and grab my stash of metal. You know what it is. This thing does everything. Oh, not you. Yeah, that's right. Oh, easy on the paintwork there. This is kind of hard with one arm. Oh, 
There we go. Nice, uh, get a nice little hole there. So we'll run this back inside, start chopping it up. Yeah, that'll work. So I went with eighth inch plate for this thing, eight inch wide. Uh, it's gonna be plenty strong. Most frames aren't much more than eighth inch. And uh, I've used this in the past a ton. It's always done the job. This thing doesn't haul anything, doesn't carry any weight really. Uh, so it'll be fine. Anyway, it's also what uh, we had to work with on kind of short notice. Perfect. So if you saw my last, last video, I went ahead and got my Hobart plasma cutter fixed up and back to cutting. Let me tell you, this thing's a lifesaver. Versus cutting this thing with the torch, it's night and day difference. So I'm going to get this thing traced out real quick, and then we'll start cutting it. All right, let's start knocking this thing out. like me and you don't really subscribe to all the super fancy uh, fabrication tools and whatever I'm using rusty old junk and whatever I got laying around you see all these guys using the die chem to mark everything and yeah if you're machining I think that's great you know if you're doing super precise fab work also a good idea this is a mini notch on a 96 Ranger. I don't care that much. But what I can do is the shade tree method. Get yourself a blue permanent marker and uh, you know something to scribe with. So I got me a nail here and basically I'm just transferring my center lines from my template here back onto my mini notch so I can align everything back to the truck where it needs to be. As you can see, I got only the most precise equipment with me. Hey, you're lucky I'm not measuring it in pop cans this time. So, I'm going to take me a little scribe mark here. And I'm going to take me a little scribe mark here. And then I'm going to take my perfectly straight edge, straight edge. There we go. Now you're probably asking yourself, how did you get this perfectly aligned with using a nail and you know some pencil marks? And the answer is I didn't. But I wanted something in the ballpark and then a lot more precise than in the ballpark, just in case I need to get that crazy. And uh, yeah, this will work just fine. If I was doing something a little more precise than this, Sure, you bet, I'd be getting out, you know, more precise tools, but if I can put this thing together and I'm off by a pencil width on everything, no one will ever know. It'll be our little secret. Anyway, there's my scribe marks, my old uh, die chem marker here, and that one's good to go. We'll get the other one marked out here. Dig her in.
There we go. Perfect. Now the point in going through all that is just to kind of show you guys that if you're not super comfortable with you know heavy fabrication work or you think I don't have the tools or I don't have this or I don't have that and that's not how I saw them do it you know on the internet or on YouTube or wherever you don't necessarily have to have that look I started out building you know these trucks back here with nothing more than you know a cutoff wheel a sawzall and you know originally I had a stick welder I didn't do any of this with the stick welder but <laughs> I just had little and nothing and just the willingness to learn and the willingness to get out there and try and fail. And that's why I'm not scared to show you some hack stuff that I did 20 years ago because I've learned and I've grown and I've expanded my knowledge and I hope that you guys do the same and that it's not always about the fanciest tools and the most expensive equipment. You can do it with whatever you got, and there's no time better than now to start learning and to start practicing. And it's kind of like the old saying goes, practice makes perfect. Am I perfect? No. There's very few people out there that are. So, you know, let the internet trolls laugh away at whatever you may be doing, but you know what? I bet you're doing more than they are. So anyway... We'll keep going here. I got two of these cut out now, and I think I'm going to pause on cutting stuff. I'm going to get over to the truck and start hopefully fitting stuff and cutting some metal out off the truck. Now, unlike most uh, you know, builds or projects, I don't really have a solid game plan. I know what I want to end up with, but I haven't sat down and penciled out every little piece of it. So a lot of this is kind of by the seat of my pants. So... Yeah, I guess if you like that kind of stuff, just kind of winging it and going with whatever works, hey, I'm the channel for you, right? So anyway, I'm going to start hacking this thing up, I guess. I just kind of wanted to come back to something I said earlier that, you know, I'm using an eighth inch plate here. Here's the chunk I cut out of the frame, and I just cleaned up a little section to get all the slag off and everything. And you can see there's not a huge difference between those two pieces. Yeah, the factory frame is just a hair thicker, but it's not like any quarter inch or anything like that. All right, well, I ended up deciding to take a little bit more out here. That way I could relief cut these, bend them out, and that way I have a nice flat surface to weld against. Uh, one issue I did run into, I may have had a little bit of an oopsie with my brake line, which isn't the worst thing ever because I planned on redoing these. These are fairly new, but since I need to redo this mounting bracket and probably the hoses and everything, meh, whatever. Uh, the only problem with that now is I don't have brakes, so if I do need to drive it up to the shop or somewhere else, I may have to figure something out sooner than later. But hopefully I have that all addressed before that issue ever becomes a problem. So I think a little more cleanup, a little more prep, and I'm ready to start tacking in that plate right there. So I think the idea here is going to be that I'm going to try and get away with leaving either some or all of this factory frame inside it. I'm going to weld from the inside to that piece that I cut. I did leave a little bit of overhang so that can go down in there, weld it from the outside, 
and then obviously box it in with new metal from the inside of the notch and the outside of the notch. Now I do need to leave a little bit of room in here because I'm going to put those pancake bump stops back in. So I need room for the bolt to go up through there. And uh, yeah, so I may have to uh, either cut a hole in this or just cut a small section of it out. But for the time being, I'm going to get this thing good and tacked in here so it can't move anywhere. About there. should be good there. I do have a bit of a gap over here, but that's why I did the relief cuts. I'm hoping I can go back and kind of massage that out. A little bit of a gap down here, massage that out. But otherwise, this is all sitting pretty good. And from here, about halfway down the frame is sitting pretty good. So I feel pretty confident in giving that a few more tacks, maybe a few tacks from the back side here, and uh, we can move on to the other half of it. All right, a little more cutting, a little more fitting. I got a template made for this. Got it cut out, got it bent. Uh, did cut a slot in here. I've decided that I'm gonna weld this all along the top on both sides. And then once I throw this in here and cap it, it'll be just extra strong. The point behind this guy here is that my bump stop needs to bolt in and when I put the plate in the bottom side, I'll just weld a nut on the inside here, but I need room for the stud of the bump stop to come up through. Yeah, I cut it a little extra big, but you know, lightweight racing. So once it's all under there, you'll never see it anyway. And uh, yeah, I think I got my fit pretty good there. It's not perfect, but not too bad. Now to move on, start bending up this guy and then uh, I can start burning this thing in. All right, well, position of the bump stop. Yep, sure. We're just gonna go ahead and guess. Somewhere right about there. Let's see if I can do this without uh, ripping my arm off. right in there just like it should now you can see that stud sticking up which is the reason why I cut that uh, oval in the top I wasn't sure exactly well I mean I knew pretty much where this was gonna go but that allows it plenty of room to do whatever it's gonna do so what I'll probably do is dig around find a nut with the same thread and pitch and just weld it on the inside of here so then once this is all welded in place I can just put the bump stop in and screw it in and it doesn't need to be crazy tight so I can just kind of lock it down by hand call it good enough but anyway time to start fitting these up in the truck and uh, yeah hopefully start burning them in all right just put a nut on here found you know a little trusty rusty here may give it a few tacks pull the bump stop out fully weld this thing in and uh, yeah then we'll be good to go with it so that's for sure but hey it'll work all right before I get to burning these things in I want to give them the best shot at the longest life I can now uh, I'm gonna shoot them in just some gray primer you know is it the best thing in the world no but it's better than nothing 
And uh, I don't have any weld proof primer. So this will do just fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll burn, it'll do whatever, but it's better than nothing. So not a big deal. Just give them some coats, let them sit here and dry. All right, well, I'm not sure how this part's gonna turn out because I had uh, one of my SD cards corrupt on me. So hopefully I'm able to save enough footage for it to make sense to be at this point. Uh, basically, I got everything, I guess depending on what part of the video got lost, if any of it, uh, I got the inside plates cut, cleaned up, bent, uh, welded in, got the top cut, cleaned up, bent, welded in, and, uh, you know, did most of the final welding here. I do still have some on the inside to do, and, of course, I have to uh, cap the bottoms here. Now, I'm probably going to wait to cap the bottoms until I get the rear end out of the way and get a lot of just this stuff out of the way shocks all that um but yeah for the most part this is i'd say about 80 percent done uh it's i think time to probably move on to the other side now that i got kind of everything done here it should be pretty much copy and paste i got templates cut for everything i already know all the measurements that i need to do uh, i have landmarks i can base everything off for that side so should go fairly quick of course I say that, and then something else will go wrong. Now, don't you guys mind those caterpillars down there. Look, I know they ain't the prettiest. Better than some SEMA stuff that I've seen. But, I know they're strong, I know they'll hold. There's a wee bit of gap in there. If you guys saw some of the earlier clips, wee bit. I wasn't able to get it all fully pulled back without doing some weird tweaking on the frame and rolling it and stuff. It, there's still a lot of tension on it. And at that point, I'd rather just leave the frame square and fill a little bit of a gap than try and tweak that all around or, you know, cut portions of the frame out and redo it and all that stuff. You know, compared to what was in here before, this is going to be a night and day difference. Uh, I'll be fine with it. BT dubs, guys. If it seems like my progress is kind of slow and choppy, well, that's because it is. It's uh, Thanksgiving week here, or, you know, Thanksgiving was yesterday, and, eh, you know, I mean, jumping out to go do, you know, family stuff and all that, and then coming back and working on the truck some more, you know, jumping out, doing a little, uh, Helping in the kitchen, cooking, doing whatever, coming back out and working. You know, hey, I'm getting sidetracked here and there. But I'm trying to whip out as much as I can. And, uh, you know, hopefully the long weekend uh, is fruitful here. I got one side at least most of the way done. And, you know, hopefully I'd like to get the other side at least done before my uh, kind of time off here is up. But, uh, yeah, we'll see how far we get. The other quality of life measure that I took, I don't know if... You notice the first couple clips were pretty dark. I found this old kitchen light laying around the shop. I think I used to have it above my uh, toolbox when I used to have cabinets up there. Took those down and this was just kind of laying around. I have one of the big like underhood shop lights. Of course it's at work. Uh, but yeah, a few zip ties on this thing, run an extension cord, yada yada. Gives us some nice working light here. So, you know, it's not always about having the nice you know, snap on light and, you know, all that garbage. It's about just getting the job done. Right, guys back at it on the other side I figured I'd give you a quick shot of kind of how I'm laying this out 
and what I'm doing, I'm just finding a bunch of reference points basically and center line of the axle and everything that I need to measure off of. And that gives me somewhere to base my points off of. If you remember earlier when I was marking my notches, uh, it gives me somewhere to line that all up to. So I'll give you a quick shot here. You can see it's nothing too fancy here basically. That's my center line. This is the measurement from the back to the front and this one here you can't kind of see it because of the light but this one here is from the front to the back here and then that gives me an overall measurement same as the other side mark the center of it and then basically I have the outside of my notches here and here and then the material I'm going to cut out here this line that runs along here is the flat basically flat point of the frame you can see from where that point of the box sits to up here right about there where the flat point of that box sits basically you can see the line just barely there I just basically marked that line so I had a nice flat place to start and that's where this line comes into play and then I'm taking all my vertical measurements from that line so I know that from that line to the top of the box is a certain measurement and I can stay under that measurement. Anyway, I hope that helps you guys out. If you're running into something like this and not knowing exactly how to do it, basically just pick landmarks. It's not, you know, you're never going to get it just super, super precise. I mean, you could, you'd spend a week doing it, but you pick a landmark that works, that's symmetrical and kind of work from there. Now, is this going to be, you know, machinist perfect? No, and it doesn't need to be. I guarantee this frame is not perfectly square and perfectly true. So everything that I do based from that point is not going to be perfectly square or perfectly true. So the biggest thing to me is just getting those landmarks, making sure that I have points that are level that I can work from, and then I can base my level off of those points. So like I said, just a quick little Thing that hopefully helps you guys out if you are having similar issues or wondering how you even find these marks. That's how I do it. For those of you like me, I don't have a, uh, you know, metal brake. So, next best thing, the old bench vise here, and, uh, you know, a selection of hammers. So, I'm just going to work this thing over, a little bit of pressure on it, and a little bit more pressure on it. The dead blow works nice to kind of get the shape that I want. Ball peen works nice to clean this edge up. Sometimes you just gotta work with what you got. I'm gonna take it just a little bit at a time until I think it's close to where it needs to be and then go fit it, probably do a little bit more, fit it again, do a little bit more, just trying to sneak up on it. So, you know, I'll keep hammering away. We'll get back to you when I got something to show. All right, so I got my two side pieces tacked in place, obviously, and uh, all we're doing right now is just a little dry fit. So, you can see I still need to come in a little bit more here. Uh, you probably can't see the front. You need to come in a little bit more there, which will bring that up some. So, back to the vise, a little more hammering. We'll get there. All right, after some more, you know, beating, banging, a little bit of grinding, there we go, pretty nice fit. There's still a little bit, a little bit of a dip in the middle that I'll hammer a little bit up before I go and weld this in, but 
I intentionally oversized this just a little bit so I have a nice V groove to weld into. That way when I do go back and clean this up some, you know, I'm not going to make this like perfectly smooth and fit and finish and all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to make this nice and strong. So a little bit of a V groove here to weld into and that'll be perfect for this thing. So I'm pretty happy with that. But before I go and start tacking pieces in, I need to cut this center out. And I need to massage this just a hair more. Let's give it one of these. Where'd that get me? A little bit closer. A little bit more. How's that looking? Say that's a beaut, Clark. Look at that. Nice even gap all the way across. I could maybe stand to take a hair off this side. Bring it down a little bit, but overall, I'm pretty happy with that. So, I'm going to call that good. I can move on to cutting out that little kidney bean in the middle to clearance for my bump stop. And we're about ready to start tacking some more pieces together. Anyway, got it all fit up. Looking good. Ready to start burning stuff in. So... Anyway, good enough to get me welded. These are nice for working metal, but they sure don't do anything for welding. So, got that one. Start burning this thing in. I forgot to weld the inside. Oh well, I can weld it from the bottom. It's not ideal, but you know, hey, whatever. Anyway, finish buzzing this in. All right, well, semi-finished product here. The uh, notch is fully welded other than the bottom side. I'll get to that later, but both of them are completely uh, welded up, ready to go. Other than that, I got a little bit of cleanup to do, some of these welds and stuff on this. Just taking off some of the rough edges and whatnot, just clean it up and make it ready for paint, whatever I decide to put on here. First, before I can get to that, I need to get the rear end out of place. Now that's going to be a project for another day. Uh, I have some parts already showing up and some parts on their way. And I need to get that thing out of there regardless to finish that welding up. It's just too tight of a confine. I can't contort like that to be able to get up in there and weld everything I need to do. So I want to get that stuff out of the way first before I try and even do any of that. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, it's been fun. This is really the first kind of major fabrication project I've done in my garage since we got the place. Other than that, it's been kind of what you've seen, little stuff here and there, turning wrenches, doing whatever, a lot of it outside in the driveway. But it's good to get back. This has been stuff I've been wanting to do forever on this truck and really just never had the time. So I'm glad to be back on this thing. I hope you guys are enjoying the series, maybe picking up a trick or two that you can use on your own project. But for now, I think that's going to end this one off. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Hope you had a good time. Friends, family, all that. Lots to be thankful for. And, yeah, I guess we'll catch you next time. I got a crap ton of cleaning. I'm not thankful for that, that's for sure. All right.